my process is mainly identifying the setups that I really like. I'm comfortable with them because I've taken them for multiple years now and then focusing on location. So in, in this case, the 200MA, the VWAP, um, the 20MA, those locations where I see a burst or momentum, I, I, I like to jump in and capitalize on the move. his journey with the trader pool the way and the style he's been trading um let's dive right to it joshua how are you doing buddy oh not bad michael thanks for uh, having me on yeah. this interview very much uh, happy to have you here because uh, we talked about it a minute ago off camera you've been with us for a while right you already tried the evaluation a few times and this is um the first time you pass in the evaluation right right so yeah. what's uh, what's the difference between now and the previous uh, evaluation that you took? I think uh, the biggest difference uh, this time around was I really um, leaned into my experience. I trusted myself a little bit more. Uh, I went back and tried to understand um, how I failed uh, those previous evaluations and uh, try to really break down uh, what worked and what didn't and, and focused on what worked and, um, and really trusted myself. I think that was the key, just really uh, leaning into my experience and just believing that um, I can do this and and you know what it it, it worked so um, nice. yeah. how what is the size of the account that you traded uh, it's 160,000 160 okay that's nice and uh, how long you've been trading for so I've been trading uh, for about five years I started in 2018 uh, but I think I really took it seriously about three years ago um, during COVID COVID, um, right? Right. And yeah. so, ma so many traders got into trading during COVID. That was a perfect time to, you know, just to learn more, focus more on trading, especially when mm -hmm. you're at home and everything. So uh, that's great. Uh, congratulate, obviously, um, on that moment. Uh, now that you are a funded trader, uh, for those of you not familiar with the program, you basically go through a phase of evaluation. Once you pass it, you get funded, split the profit. And everybody's happy. So um, let's talk a little bit about the trading style. What is, uh, what are you looking for? What is it that you do on a daily basis? So I, um, I mean, I jumped around a lot uh, previously, and I think what I came to realize was that uh, I really needed to sharpen my focus and focus on just a few instruments. So um, before I would, you know, look at ten to fifteen. Um, uh, stocks, instruments uh, to try to trade. But then I realized that I was missing a lot of uh, moves. And so I really worked on focusing on um, three or four. And I think that changed the game for me. Uh, because what I realized was every stock has, you know, a two hour play or three hour play a couple of times in a day. Yeah. Um, and so if I really paid attention and had the patience to sit through it, I, I would see what I wanted to see. And I could I could just t take the trades that I wanted to take and the timings that I um, I had, right? So uh, that's that's sort of uh, how I how I looked at uh, you know uh, my trading. Um, I also I, I'm a momentum trader. I would say I, would, I just focus on um, you know where the stock is uh, relative to the WIWAP um, and then the 20 MA, the 200 MA. Um, really try to understand if you know there's like a an event that's happening in those areas, and then I would look at the higher time frames to see if uh, the play made sense, and then I would I would execute on the play. So. Uh, that's sort of what I've been doing for the last uh, little while. And it took you a while, you're saying, you jumped before finding the, this edge or the, the strategy that works for you. You had to jump from one thing to another until you um, managed to understand or or build the uh, the one that works for you, right? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of the traders go through the same path. All of us actually probably going <laughs> through the same path of uh, just understanding what we need to do and and then just uh, configure it or, you know, just fine tune it until uh, it works for us. So that's uh, great. Um, I used to have the same uh, problem or issue as you mentioned. So what is it besides momentum trading? What is it that you go, you know, looking for going into the setups? Uh, walk me through it a little bit. So the guys at home, you know, just starting, they will understand what exactly you doing that works for you. Yeah, I think uh, so. When you first start out in your journey, I mean, you're going to start looking at a bunch of YouTube videos, trying to 
trying to learn and understand what the setups look like. And that's, I would say, the foundation. So you've got to understand how price moves um, yeah. based on structure and, for example, like a wedge, uh, how, how that looks like, how that plays out. Um, so once you get comfortable with different setups, um, you really have to, it's based on your experience. You'll take a lot of these plays and you, you'll have to look back and try to figure out, okay, what worked, what didn't. Um, and focus on what works for you. And so, for example, if you see a, a wedge setup um, that's you know coming off the 200 MA and the 20 MA in in the um, time frame that you trade. So, for example, I, I like to trade off the five minute and the 15 minute. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you see that play, uh, you know you have to have some confidence that it's going to work based on the experience that you've had. Um, and so, a lot of this has to do with tracking your trades previous, the previous trades that you've taken really doing like a deep dive of post analysis on, on those trades, what worked, what didn't, what do the higher time frames look like? Um, and then you can kind of refine your process, fine tune it as you continue. Um, and, and so my process is mainly identifying the setups that I really like. I'm comfortable with them because I've taken them for multiple years now and then focusing on location. So in, in this case, the 200 MA, the VWAP, um, the 20 MA, those locations where I see a burst or momentum, I, I, I like to jump in and capitalize on the move. Yeah, nice. And do you usually trade um, mid cap, large cap, penny stock? Uh, mainly, yeah, mainly uh, large cap. I mean, I used to do everything uh, except for uh, pennies, uh, but now I focus mainly on mid on large caps. So um, the four instruments I trade are uh, Tesla, uh, Microsoft, uh, SPXL, and uh, XOM, which is oil and gas. So I, I tried to diversify a little bit. So I got the s and I got a few NASDAQ um, tickers. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and so there's always something, there's always a move that happens. So I'm not missing anything. And so that was the key for me, identifying which, which stocks that, um, that best fit my characteristics and, and, and just going with it. And not to mention those stocks have high volume. So um, you, you're not too concerned about sitting through a play for so long um if yeah. you if you find if you find a setup um, at a good location um you know you can take the trade confidently knowing that it'll it'll either work really quickly or or it won't right and um yeah so it's just your experience that guides you um so you like i said ev everyone will start off doing a whole bunch of stuff um and then as you continue you'll kind of refine your process and fit um to find what fits your uh personality i would say yeah. so this is what worked for me and and so i'm sticking with it so uh, super interesting because i know a lot of traders obviously in our firm and stuff that i had in the back in in the past and you know there are guys that trade in penny stocks there are guys that focus in on um, the most uh, you know hot stock of the day right and there are mm -hmm. traders like you that focus in on those two to four or five symbols and trade it every single day, right? Um, but uh, what interesting to understand maybe is how did you got to the point that you know that you are trading Tesla and SPLX and, um, and XOM? Why those symbols besides the volume, obviously, and the volatility? Is there anything besides that? Yeah, like, uh, so... Before I selected these stocks, I mean, I would dabble in them early on. Um, like previously, I would I would ha take plays in them. But it's the post analysis when you look back um, at that ticker and and you see how it moves, um, and then you identify plays that you regularly take that that could work. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's that back testing that you need to do for each of those uh, stocks uh, symbols, uh, and then figure out. Listen, does this work for me? Like, am I seeing trades? in here in the past that I, I would have taken. And if yeah. you see enough of that lining up, then, you know, it's just a matter of time. You just got to be patient and stick with it. Right. Um, so that's, it takes some time. Um, and that's why this journey becomes like a three to five year journey, because you really need to go through, um, you know, almost every iteration that the market throws at you. You gotta, you gotta see it all and, and, you know, um, learn from all the le lessons that the market wants to teach you. Cause you know, you can, you can learn it on the second recurrence or you can learn it on the 80th but yeah. you have to learn your lesson or else you're not going to advance. So that's, that's a very, it's a very important fact, I would say in, in trading. That's incredible. That's a great tip for everyone. You know, even if you just started or doing it for a year or so, 
you know, just focusing and go back testing, understanding what what works for you and what not, and then focusing on the um, the symbols, the relevant symbols to trade on. That's uh, that's great. So uh, let's dive into your chart just a tiny bit, go through it, um, analyze it, understand what you did. Because uh, let's go dark mode. So uh, so this that's uh, your chart, right? Correct. Uh, that's yeah. the evaluation, reached the target. You barely had some uh, fallbacks. Like that's a very beautiful chart. I got to tell you that. Uh, and as you mentioned, you're trading uh, Microsoft, Tesla, um, XO, SP, Excel uh, very nicely. High percent success rate, 58. That's that's good. Let's talk a little bit about the downside. You know, you almost reached the top right here. And then yeah. you had some pullback. Tell me a little bit about that. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so that was interesting, actually, because that, that trade that took me to, uh, I think it was close to 7,400, um, I actually exited early. Um, I think, I think uh, what I got confused about was, um, you know, as part of the program, there's a, there's a rule that says that you can't have a winning trade that's over 30%. Right. Um, so that, that, the trade that it was in there would have actually worked and would have taken me uh, to the 7,800, but I actually cut it off early. Um, and then once I cut it off, I, I looked at the PL and I was like, oh, listen, I'm, I'm really close. And I, and I think it's the, the fear of success that kind of kicks in because you start, you, you think you can get there really fast. And I, I jumped into a play that I thought would work and it, and it didn't. And then, you know, you, you, I, I, I drew down a little bit there. But uh, the thing w at that point was I, I learned that, you know, you really have to stick with the process there, not try to chase the number. Yeah. Uh, and so th that was a very important uh, period or time for me because, it showed me that you know you're not infallible. You're you're gonna make mistakes, but you have to you have to stay true to um, how what got you there, right? And uh, that's I just stuck with it, and and that's why you see that that dip is kind of smooth. It's yeah. just because I the process kicked back in. I was like, okay, I need to focus on what I I used to do and what I did right, and and uh, it worked out. That's a, that's great, super great insight, and uh, you did it within how many days? Like. It started on the fifth, so yeah, like a, a month and a half, right? Even a, a yeah, less than that. Yeah. So, no, I finished in in about two weeks. Oh yeah, because uh, yeah, it's already on the twentieth. Okay, June. So yeah. two weeks. That's great. Sixty trades that you made out of mm -hmm. the thirty that we basically uh, need. Um. So yeah, wonderful. I gotta say, uh, that's a beautiful chart. Again, it's, it was obviously after you already uh, tested the evaluation for a few times before you pass. I said it many times, guys, uh, that listening right now, you know, in many videos, you got to give yourself that buffer, that budget in order to trade the evaluation two, three, four times even until you pass it. So give yourself that chance. In most cases, uh, traders will need that. And, you know, like in anything we do in life, you got to have few attempts until you succeed, right? So uh, in anything we do. So just give yourself that. It's super important. Don't give up after one attempt, definitely. Um, yeah, Joshua, so anything um, just to conclude, do you want to give the guys at home a tip or anything about trade a pool? What, what do you think about the process? Because you've been in it for a while, so... Yeah, it's it's a great it's a great program, um, and you've mentioned this in previous videos. There aren't a lot of uh, proprietary prop firms that uh, offer stocks that you can uh, trade. So this was a good um, breath of relief, I would say. Um, but to the viewers, I would say that uh, you know you have to be very objective about your skill level because if you feel that um, you haven't uh, learned everything that you need to learn, or or you're still um, you know, a novice, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that you try the, the higher tier programs. I would focus on the, the smaller tier ones, mm -hmm. gain your experience because the program's not going to go anywhere. Trading's not going to go anywhere. You just need to be comfortable with how you trade and finding a process, find a process and, and an edge. Um, once you can do that, then the sky's the limit. You can, you can trade whatever you want. So I would, I would really tell the viewers to be objective of your skill set at the current moment before you, um, before you enter any of the programs. So 
uh, you know, that's it's it's a good piece of information because like you mentioned, you're not going to likely pass the first time. It'll take you a few times. But you can't be discouraged. You just have to be objective and, and really, um, you know, ensure that you have a sound system or a process set and you can get to whatever goal you want to get to. Yeah, we have a lot of guys that, you know, sign in for the mini BP, the, the smallest one, that's $97. And then uh, once they pass it, they feel okay and comfortable to go and now purchase, let's say, the extra BP or the ultimate BP and give them enough buying power to, you know, to, to make real damage in a good way. Um, so, yeah, definitely a good advice. Alrighty, so for those of you not familiar again or didn't join yet, Trade a Pool, feel free to jump into our pool, tradepool.com, and hopefully you will be the next interviewed. Uh, yeah, thanks so much, Joshua, and good luck. Thanks, Michael. Yeah.